Sometimes the games industry really sucks, and this year has been a pretty nightmarish with that. There's been a whole load of layoffs, you've probably seen it all in the news. At last count, I do believe over 6,000 people so far have lost their jobs, and this is coming from a whole variety of different studios. Unfortunately, as of today, Frontier Developments have announced they're also joining the ranks of studios to laying off staffs. Now, Frontier haven't announced how many people are going to be laid off, but it is a part of their plans going forward. Unfortunately, Frontier cite that their previous few years haven't been that good in terms of well, profitability and financial return. We know that the F1 series has underperformed both F1 2022 and the more recent F1 2023, but something Frontier didn't expressly mention in their recent information here is that they've also had a long string of other games that have underperformed, all the way from Elite Dangerous Odyssey, I do believe, right up till today. Now, we do know from Frontier's recent financial report dated September this year that they did see an operating loss of £26.6 .6 million compared to an operating profit of £1.5 million in the previous year. So that's not good by any means. So yes, Frontier has effectively cited a period of disappointing financial performance and more challenging industry conditions as a reason behind these uh, redundancies as well as this recovery program they're undertaking. The redundancies, they say, are just a part of it. Whilst Frontier haven't given any specific numbers on the number of redundancies they're going to be making, some gaming websites have cited some sources suggesting that it could be in the region of 50 to 200 people by Christmas of this year. Now, it seems that Frontier do believe they can return to profitability, but it's likely not going to happen for a fair while yet. They're still looking forward, however, they're looking towards the next big release, which of course is Warhammer Age of Sigma Realms of Ruin. This game is releasing in November, and the Frontier, by all accounts, seem to be pinning a whole lot of expectations on this big release. Very likely, they've put a huge amount of funds into developing this game, and uh, yeah, from what I've seen, it's looking very good. The trailers are very impressive. The demo that was available during Steam Next Fest was also pretty impressive for the at least from the amount of gameplay that it showed. However, it is worth mentioning that this game is releasing in perhaps the busiest gaming release period of the year in November, so it's going to have stiff competition. Also, the Age of Sigma IP doesn't have anywhere near the brand recognition that Warhammer 40,000 has, and it's quite possible that this will impact sales as well. But here's hoping the game does sell very well. After all, it does seem very clear that the team are dedicated towards this game and have put a lot of love and time into it. Unfortunately then, for Frontier, this is a string of news that just hasn't been all that good for them over the past few months and the past uh, year or two. They've recently had to shut Frontier Foundry, their third-party publishing arm, due to that also underperforming, and they've also had some other games over the past year or two also underperform. So yeah, things are not looking too rosy there. But ultimately, I don't think, at least as far as I'm concerned, it's not the company itself in terms of the, uh, well, the shareholders and the board of directors that I'm ultimately that concerned about. The people who are really going to feel all of this are going to be the workers who are losing their jobs. And many of these are no doubt going to be very talented people who love their job, have a passion for the content they produce, and have put a lot of time and investment into all the titles they've worked on over the years. So this is really where things start to genuinely suck. And regardless of whether or not people feel Frontier have made bad decisions over the years, it shouldn't be the devs or the staff that suffer the consequences of those decisions, especially if the decisions were made by senior management or the board of directors. But that generally seems to be how things are going. Now, in broader games industry news, this is all part of a bigger issue. Many other studios have laid off a lot of staff, and this includes some really big studios. Epic recently announced 800 layoffs, uh, all of these studios, by the way, seem to be doing it for a variety of different reasons. Epic, they do say, are not quite making the profitability they were making a few years ago, and they essentially have had to change a lot of their business. A big part of that is how Fortnite is operating, and they're refocusing Fortnite away from the big battle royale uh, days when it used to, or when it first took off, really, towards a more creator content centric focus. This is basically people, the creators out there, who are adding content into the game themselves and this is the way I well, can imagine seeing other games go in the future there's a lot of uh, potential here but Epic do say that the because they've got to pay the creators for adding content into the game 
it does mean that the profit margins are that much slimmer, and this is a big part of the reason for some of the layoffs. In other areas, specifically, specifically the UK, Team 17, another really well-known studio, has also unfortunately announced a selection of layoffs. Elsewhere in the industry, Telltale, the makers of The Wolf Among Us, as well as the recent The Expanse game, have also announced some layoffs. Now, they haven't given any specific numbers on the amount of people they're letting go of, but yeah, well, even if it's just one, that's one too many. So it's really hard to tell where things are going to go over the next few years with the games industry. And of course, it's not really just isolated to the games industry alone. Many other industries and workers also fit in the pinch as are everyday people, regardless of where they work or where they don't work. Things are just getting that much tighter all round. My hope is that perhaps with the big releases coming up this year, at least for some of these studios, they're going to offset some of the cost loss that the studios and companies feel they've taken. And as they return to profitability, just maybe they can start opening up job positions again, therefore giving many of these thousands of people uh, other places to go. Unfortunately then, a pretty depressing subject to talk about today, but something that I feel it did need addressing nonetheless. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.